Deputy Claire Curran, the spokesperson for agriculture for Sinn Féin. Can you tell us first of all what you see as the biggest uh, challenges facing farmers at the moment? Do you think there are overall challenges or would you consider it more specific to sectors? Well, I think there are a couple of challenges that are right across the board in relation to agriculture. I think the biggest challenge coming at farmers is obviously climate and the actions that farmers are going to take and have been taken for a really long time, only for the fact that they haven't actually been remunerated for those actions. I, I think climate action in the first instance is going to be a huge challenge for farmers right across the board, regardless of what sector you're in in farming. And I think second, and again, it is across the spectrum as well, is the price that farmers are getting for really high quality produce and I think those are issues that continue and that are remaining challenges for farmers and they're two challenges for, for government and for any government to get right and for me as well in relation to the price that farmers are getting like that really is a basic uh, when it comes to agriculture and it's something that we're not getting right in an awful lot of sectors but I think for any farmer you speak to today they're worried in relation to climate and I think a lot of farmers feel the finger is pointed at them a lot whereas they are the ones that have been looking after the farm the land for generations but they need to be supported and brought along with us in relation to what we're going to be asking them to do. That's really important because without them, we're not going to get where we need to get in relation to meeting our targets for climate action. A lot of the climate action is incorporated into the Common Agricultural Policy, mm -hmm. which has obviously come from Europe. That has been agreed now up until mm -hmm. 2027. There could be a general election before then, which mm -hmm. Sinn Féin may get into government. Mm -hmm. What could Sinn Féin do with the cap, given that it has been agreed now up to that period of 2027? Yeah, I, I think in relation to the cap, the cap is agreed, and it's agreed now until 2027. I think if you look at what, what was agreed, it is a bad deal for farmers. We are seeing a cutting cap in real terms. That is the reality in relation to what we're getting. We're asking farmers now to do more and more and more with less. And I think th there's another issue with the cap too, in that cap CAP was set up to support food production. It's now going in a lot of other ways, particularly around environmental, whereas I really think we need to see a separate pillar in relation to that. CAP needs to be retained for supporting food production. That's really important. And we need to see new funding then from Europe in particular when it comes to supporting those environmental measures. But in relation to CAP and going back, if we were in government, if we had Mary Lewis Taoiseach, we'd be going out to Europe to seek more. You know, Ireland is paying more in now to Europe. We're getting less back in relation to CAP. That shouldn't be the case. But we'd be seeing ourselves as putting forward a really strong argument and pushing hard for a better cap and for new funding streams so you're not just making cap less and less about food production and supporting farmers that way and making it environmentally friendly. We have to do that in separate ways and we're going to need new funding. Farmers are going to need far more investment and support to do what they need to do and cap moving it in that direction without new funding streams isn't going to work. You come from a farming background as we can see here yourself. Mm -hmm. You are from a, a rural part of Roscommon. Mm -hmm you'd be in contact regularly with other farmers. What do you feel is the general consensus on the ground in terms of making those adaptations to climate? Yeah, I think farmers are well up for it. I think they're ready, willing and able. They can do it. And as I said, they've been doing it for generations. But they are worried and they are concerned without a shadow of a doubt. Farming has changed an awful lot. It's a lot harder today than it was. I mean, 30, 40 years ago, you had your farm. You maybe did no other work at all. And you could rear a family. You could rear seven or eight kids just off the farm. You couldn't do that today in a million years. It's changed an awful a lot. Farmers are worried about the future. They're worried about sustaining their farm in the first place. They're worried about their children and encouraging them on to taking on the farm. Because in a lot of cases, I mean, a lot of farmers are barely cutting, breaking even. And the cost of production and all of that, it puts huge pressure on farmers. And then to encourage their children then where they are in a position to, where they have the next generation coming up. And then as well as that climate is definitely concerning farmers. But I think the only way we're going to achieve what we need to achieve in agriculture is bringing farmers with us, having the conversations, agreeing what can be agreed, and every farmer doing their bit. And key to that is that they are supported financially to do that. And if that doesn't happen, then we're not going to get where we need to get in relation to agriculture and I think that's a message the government really have to take on board it is not going to happen unless we bring farmers with us and we have to listen to them they have to be at the table and we have to move forward together if we're going to achieve I think farmers are well up for this but as I said they have to be supported financially to do it you just mentioned something there in relation to young farmers coming up as well and the problem of succession, I mm -hmm. suppose generational renewal, and mm -hmm. how to make a viable farm business mm -hmm. for the younger cohort, which is more and more difficult for young farmers mm -hmm. 
nowadays. Now, I know Sinn Féin had said they would uh, ring fence 4% mm -hmm. of, of the single farm payment for young farmers. I think the EU has it at 3%. But when this comes down to brass taxes, they say it comes down to negotiations. Mm -hmm. If you take and give an extra 1% to young farmers from single farm payment, money has to come from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, where do you believe it could come from? Well, in the first instance, let's have a greater cap budget in the first place, and that's what we need. We, we have to get that. Why would Ireland put more money into Europe and then take back less? It doesn't make any sense. So we have to do that first. And then the question really is, well, if we don't give that extra to the young farmers, then young farmers aren't going to be there. And then where are we at? So we have to, I mean, we have to get that financial package put in place for the forgotten farmers. And then we have to support young farmers. And we have to have that conversation in relation to succession, in relation to you know the next generation coming up, that's really important as well. But we have to have our young farmers, we have to support them. And look, we're in a situation now in farming in Ireland, and I know it from my own dad, a lot of farmers out there don't feel confident, they don't feel like they can encourage their children onto the land like they would have done previously. I mean, in previous generations, you were nearly just expected to, that's what happened. It was the sun, typically, and that's what happened. But it's changed an awful lot now. And like there are farmers out there that are closing the gate, the, the children aren't interested, or they don't feel like they can make a living off the farm. It's a sad indictment of where we're at, and we have an awful lot to do to change that. But if we don't invest in young farmers and give them the supports to get started, to make that a viable business, then we're not going anywhere. How are you finding in your own constituency here, which is a primarily rural constituency, mm -hmm. in terms of the more extended farm family then? You know, the local people who just want to get planning permission and build off, build mm -hmm. one-off rural houses. Are you meeting people who are finding that difficult as well? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, like the funny thing is, like, I mean, if we want to sustain our rural communities and we want to have rural communities, then we need to allow people to build their house, typically where they grew up. I mean, we don't have a big issue in rural communities where you have people coming down from Dublin or from Timbuktu to buy a house or build a house in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't happen. You typically have people who grew up in a rural area. My house is down the road here. I hope to, to build and live close to home because I would live nowhere else in the world. And lots of young people that grew up in rural Ireland feel like that or they go away and they come back. So we have to get that right. We're waiting for these new guidelines for rural housing. We've been waiting for them for years now. I think at this point they're two years overdue. We need that, but we need to get it right. But I think the one welcoming thing in relation to that is that the guidelines are going to be universal because at the moment local authorities are really being a law unto themselves. The rules are different in various parts of the country and in other parts of the country it's even more difficult than it is in other parts to get that planning permission. But if we want to have people living in rural communities, then we have to allow them to live here, to set up their homes, to have a family if that's what they choose, to work, to live. And then we have to make sure that the resources are put in place into those communities, the services, many of them that have been lost for many years now. We have to make sure if we're to sustain those rural communities, we have the homes, we have the houses, and then we have the resources, the amenities, the jobs and everything that comes with it. And we've come a long way, broadband and all of that has made a difference and it will make a difference, but we need to do more. And I mean, agriculture and rural living goes hand in hand if the farmer is doing well the rural community is doing well so and I suppose that's why is another reason why we need to see the Commission on the Future of Family Farms that we've looked for set up so we can actually look to the future and I think we really need to do that especially with the, the worries around climate and all of that we need to look at how we sustain the family farm to make it viable to make it sustainable and to build our rural communities around that that's really important. Just when you mention sort of housing and rural housing there what would you say to there are some farmer groups or farmer representatives who are concerned about Sinn Féin and government in relation to the residential uh, zone land tax and farmers land being taken for housing? Yeah, farmers and agricultural land shouldn't form part of that. We've said that. I think the way this has been set up now is going to be a mess because farmers have to go to revenue, they have to declare, and it, it's going to be a very messy process. And for some farmers, it's going to be difficult as well to even know what avenue to go down. So the information in relation to that and putting that out there is going to be important. But absolutely not. Agricultural land, and look, land to farmers is precious. Nothing is more precious. So we, we need to come at that very carefully, but absolutely not. That should not be included, and we'll be very clear in relation to that. 
We can see in the Netherlands the rise in the popularity of rural-based, farmer-centred politicians. Mm -hmm. And in Ireland, there seems to be somewhat of murmurings of a similar wave here of maybe rural independence or independence forming a similar party. Now, up to now, Sinn Féin has been doing quite well in the polls and obviously positive talk about Sinn Féin potentially getting into government the next time. But this new wave of rural grouping seems to be developing a lot of popularity. Would you be concerned that that might be some sort of competition or threat to the popularity of Sinn Féin in the next election? In short, no. But, but to be honest, I can see why that's there. I mean, I live in a rural area I have all my life and lots of people are concerned in relation to the future of rural Ireland. They see a government in Dublin making decisions, you know, the, the civil service up there making decisions behind computers in relation to rural communities that they have, you know, no interest or involvement in in a lot of cases. And there are a lot of consequences to that for people living here. And people in a lot of rural communities do feel let down. You know, we've seen services being lost. You can't see a GP, you can't see a dentist, you can't get those supports and resources that used to be there maybe previously and aren't there now. And then you see the bigger towns and cities with greater amenities, greater access to amenities that in a lot of cases we don't have here. So there is frustration and that's definitely building up. I, I think potentially we could see something. I know Michael Fitzmaurice, my constituency colleague, is perhaps looking at this now again. But whether we see it or not, we'll be focused on ourselves. I have a job now as the new spokesperson for agriculture to put together strong policies that I can bring to farmers when the election is called. And I'll be asking farmers to put their faith in us. And that's going to be a job and work in itself. We have a lot of work to do and I'm not going to shy away from that. But I come from a farming family. I come from a rural community. I want us to succeed and I have a job of work to do and that's what I'm going to be focused on in the weeks and months ahead. That's my job and I'll take it very seriously uh, and I will be bringing uh, policies and asking farmers to put their faith in us when the election comes. Farming is, it's exciting and look, there's challenges there and everything else, but for rural communities as well, there's lots of challenges, but there's lots of things that are positive as well. So a Sinn Féin minister in government for agriculture, we held it in the north. It was one of two ministries we looked for in the north of Ireland. We held it for a decade. So it's something we want to do in the south. We want to be uh, in government and we want to hold the ministry for agriculture. And that's going to mean greater supports for farmers, a better deal on CAP and supporting them through this journey that we have to take in relation to climate action. And I think farmers in a lot of cases are doing the work. You know, if you take the low emission slurry spreading, that's on the rise. Farmers will do it, but we need to support them to do it. So we're going to have lots of challenges, but I think we've lots of opportunities as well. And for young people too, growing up in rural Ireland that know they can live here, they can live in their communities, they can have a life here. That's really, really important. We have a lot of work to do to build up those resources and supports in relation to all of that. And I think one mechanism that the first thing we need to do in government in the south is what we did in the north. We need a rural proofing mechanism. So decisions that are made in Dublin, there are not consequences for rural communities. We need all of those policies right across the board, all state boards right across the board. Rural proofing has to be the mechanism in place to make sure that we're not suffering the consequences of decisions made in Dublin. And that's something that in government uh, we would seek to do immediately.